And you said that maybe a couple weeks before November 2nd, all of a sudden it took a turn? Okay, tell me about that, if you will. Um, well, it was just like any other day. I was eating lunch in the cafeteria with John and Shaden and a few other people that we sit with. And um, when I got up to bust my lunch trays, he kind of pulled me aside and said, Would you help me if I killed Miss Graver? Welcome to ADMC Investigations. If you're new here, we put out videos every week, so make sure you're subscribed. Check out our library. You're sure to find something that you've never seen before. For early access and lots of exclusive content coming in 2024, have a look at our Patreon. We offer a free trial over there, so you've really got nothing to lose. The link is below. That being said, I would like to thank all of our members. You are truly appreciated. Okay, enough rambling. Let's get into it. November 3rd, 2021, Fairfield, Iowa. 66-year-old Spanish teacher Noema Graber was reported missing by family members. It was known that Miss Graber liked to walk the path at Chautauqua Park, which was in close proximity to Fairfield High School, where she taught Spanish for the last nine years. She was found later that day, bludgeoned to death under a tarp and wheelbarrow, away from the path. It was clear that she was murdered. Several students of the school came forward with information indicating who may have been responsible for this heinous crime. Searches of these individuals' homes were conducted, and investigators found bloody clothing at both locations. 16-year-old Willard Chaden Miller and 16-year-old Jeremy Goodale. Both would be arrested and both held on $1 million bonds for the suspected murder of Noema Graber. Willard Miller's attorneys fought to suppress his interviews with investigators, and as of now, our requests for them have been denied. But we will continue to try. What we do have is Jeremy Goodale's interrogation with the police regarding the death of Noema Graber. This was conducted in February of 2023, and this was part of his plea deal. This is the full interrogation of Jeremy Goodale. But first, let us have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. This is what your teacher hooked you up with. Um, We're you know, being recorded. Uh, I don't think I care. <laughs> Amigos in Fort Madison. Yeah. Amigos in Fort Madison. Yeah, from Fort Madison. So that's probably the best place for me. Jeremy, nice to see you again, in spite of the circumstances. Did you jack up your knee? I did. What'd you I'll, do? Probably a torn ACL, just playing basketball. No kidding. Oh, that you're always kind of yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 Some yeah. Just, <laughs> making a sharp move, and yeah, the last time you do that, right? Pretty much. Very good. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and start the audio recording, if that's okay. Nicole Jensen, yes, is that correct? that is okay. correct. All right. All right, this is Special Agent Ryan Kevley of the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. The date is Thursday, February 23. The time is approximately 1.06 p.m. I am here at the Lee County Sheriff's Office in rural Montrose, Iowa, for the purpose of conducting a proper interview pursuant to a proper agreement with Jeremy Goodall, reference FECR005144. Also present is Lieutenant Julie, Julie Kinsella of the Fairfield PD, and Goodall's representation, Alan Cook and Nicole Jensen. All right, so again, thanks for being with us. I'm glad that we have this chance to talk. Uh, before we get going too far, um, uh, do you recognize this right here? Um, that would be the proper agreement. Yes, yes. And, and that's your signature there at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Just wanted to make sure that that's uh, clear. Um, and then just to go over a couple other things before we get going, um, I don't know if you remember me, but you and I had a brief conversation early on with your dad. Mm -hmm. I executed a search warrant on your person, fingernails, shoes, that sort of thing, I think it was. Um, but didn't have a chance to sit down like we're doing today, so I'm glad we have that opportunity. Um, I don't work for, for the Fairfield PD or the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. I work for the state. Occasionally, state guys will get called in um, just to kind of help out with uh, major felony level investigations, so that's why I'm here. Um, and then obviously, this is Lieutenant Kinsella from the uh, uh, from the Fairfield PD. 
Um, so it sounds like you've had a chance to review the proffer agreement paperwork with 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 Alan and with Nicole. Okay, Correct. very good. Um, so uh, the the main objective here is is just to learn as much as we can about this particular case and your knowledge of it. So at certain times, um, I'm certainly going to ask some questions that could be uncomfortable for you to answer. Um, I understand that. Um, we're also going to have some things that we don't ask that we're going to somewhat depend on you to fill in those blanks for us because since neither Lieutenant Kinsella or myself were there, it's kind of on you to to identify certain things that we may not know of that you may just need to offer up. So um, that's to say that I've got a lot of questions here. Lieutenant has a lot of questions, but there's going to be some questions we just don't know to ask. Is that, is that fair? Okay, very good. Um, just to kind of start off with, um, where is your, so you're at the, the Juvenile Detention Center here in Lee County? Correct. Okay. And has that been primarily where you've been since you've been taken into custody? Correct. Okay. All right. And then do you have a cell there yourself or how does that work? I have my own cell. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you have much interaction with other cellmates or other inmates? Yeah. 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 How, how, like daily? Every day. Um, I've got a table of people that I sit with, eat okay. with, conversate with, play cards with. Okay. And then I interact with everyone there during school hours because we have a school system there with teachers. Gotcha. Okay. And how's school going? Oh, it's going pretty good. Good. Any top topics that you specifically like or dislike? I wish I had another science class, but... Yeah. Like science? Yes. Okay. And as of late, have you felt like you've been able to get enough sleep at night? Um, well, last night in particular, no, but in general, yes. Would you say it's because you're anxious about today or? Okay. Correct. Okay. But in general, you're able to get some decent sleep? Generally, yes. Okay. Did you have breakfast before you came in? I did. Okay. Actually, I didn't eat breakfast today. I just couldn't. I had a glass of orange juice instead. Okay. Um, do you have lunch? Um, yeah. Okay. If you wind up getting hungry since you kind of skip breakfast, um, some of the people that we work with have offered up if you want to bring a pizza in or a pop or something like that, just let us know. Like, it's very kind. Of yeah, don't be shy. If you want something, let us know, okay? All right. Okay. And then are you currently on any medications at all? Um, no. Okay. No sleep aids, no vitamins, nothing? Oh, I'm on, uh, I take vitamin D and melatonin, but... Okay. And then um, I'm going to be referring a lot back to November of 2021, since that's what we're here to talk about. At that time, what was your, your home address? Uh, 306 West Hempstead. West Hempstead. And at that time, that, that's the address that you live with at that, or lived at at that time? Correct. Okay. And who did you live there with? Um, my sister, my nephew, and my father. Okay. And how old was your sister? She would have been 26. Okay. What's her name? Jacqueline Goodale. Can you spell that for me? J-A-Q-U-L-I-N-E. Okay. And then what about your nephew? What's, what's his name? Dominic. Okay. How old is Dominic? He just turned five, actually. So he would have been three? Four. Four? At the time? At the time of arrest. He, okay. No, he would have been three uh, at the time of arrest. Okay. Now five. All right. And then what's your dad's name? I, again, I met him and I probably have it written down somewhere, but what's your dad's name? Dean Goodell. Dean Goodell. Okay. Seemed like a nice person when we spoke. Okay. And then um, at that time, were you a sophomore in high school? Yeah, I would have been a sophomore. 10th grade? Okay. And how had you been doing in school around that time? Um, fairly well. A's and B's. Okay. Same type of thing in terms of like and science? Yes. Okay. Any extracurricular activities that you were involved in? I'd like to make a change. I'm pretty sure it was 11th grade. I don't know. It, was, it would have been would have been 11th grade, yes. Probably okay. Now I, I okay. don't know how I messed that up, but yeah. So you would have you would have graduated this coming spring. Yes. So last year would have been your 11th yes. grade year. Okay. 
Okay. And um, I should have asked this before, but is your mom in the picture at all with you? No. No? Okay. And, and it, does she live away? Is she deceased? What's her What's her status? Um, she lives in Colorado, and I've had no contact with her for the past several years. Okay. To include since November, you haven't had any contact with her since then either? No contact. Outside of school, you said that you weren't involved in any, any extracurricular activities, uh, into skateboarding, what, what are you into? Um, yes, I skateboard, I played tennis for Fairfield High School. Okay. What kind of music into? I've got a wide range, but I guess my go-to would be Rolling Stones. Oh okay. yeah? Yeah. Sympathy for the Devil, huh? Any favorite tracks of theirs? Oh, Black. Black's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Black's pretty mm -hmm. good. Cool. All right, so around that time, and granted things have obviously changed in the last year and a half or so, um, at that time, who would you describe as some of your closest friends? Um, well, Chayden Miller. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Zach Askar. Okay. Uh, Hoyt Wilson. Okay. John Burnett. Okay. Who else? Uh, Ellie Shepard. Ellie, as in female? Yeah. Okay. What about Zoe? Zoe Fintal, are you getting close with her? Oh, getting close, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and around that time, we were all teenagers once. Were you using any substances, smoking weed occasionally? Yeah, smoking ecstasy. weed, um, drinking a little. Mm -hmm. I was occasionally psychedelics was the extent of my experimentation with drugs. Okay. And what kind of psychedelics were you trying? Mushrooms and LSD. All right. And around when did you did you use those? Um, like junior high, junior freshman year, the beginning of my junior year. Oh, beginning of your junior year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else you were dating besides again getting to know Zoe? No. Okay. Okay. So you said that you were getting A's and B's. Um, in, in general, uh, school going pretty well though in terms of your classes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, ever have any issues with classmates, bullying, or, or anything of that nature? No. Okay. And then did you have any, um, did you take any Spanish classes in high school? I did. Okay. And what years did you take Spanish? Um, well, I took Spanish one at Maharishi School. Okay. And then I would have taken Spanish two with Miss Graber. Okay. And what year did you take Spanish two? Sophomore year. Sophomore year. So last school year, your 11th grade year, you were not in a, in a Spanish class. Okay. okay. How did you do in that class? Um, I passed. I think I passed with a C or a D. I didn't do very well. Okay. Why didn't you do very well? Did you think that it was just because Spanish isn't your thing or a teaching style or? I just didn't know where to look to find the homework. Okay. Yeah. Didn't do any of the homework. Okay. And when you mentioned Maharishi School, I, I probably should have asked, have you spent your whole life, had you spent your whole life up to that point in Fairfield? Um, well, I've spent my whole life in Fairfield. Yeah, living in Fairfield yeah. is what I mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Why did you transfer from MSAE to 
Um, HHS. MSA had some wacky politics, and also it became too expensive. What kind of wacky politics? Mandating COVID vaccines, forcing masks, lockdowns, etc. I see. Okay. And so, um, having had, and, and did you have Spanish two for a full school year, two semesters? So, having had her for a full school year, what was your take on her? Like, did you, were you indifferent? Did you not prefer her as a, as a teacher? Did you prefer her as a teacher? What was your takeaway? I mean, I liked my last Spanish teacher a little better. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly indifferent. Mm -hmm. And you talked about um, Chayden Miller being one of your close friends. Um, I'll just refer to Miss Chayden from here on out, if that's okay with you. Um, when did you first, have you known Chayden your whole life? Did, was he always a classmate and then became closer friends? How would you describe your history with, with Chayden? Um, well, he went to the Maharishi school with me. We transferred the same year. Um, we didn't always get along. I think we became closer friends around mm, my eighth grade, seventh grade year. Okay. And what was it about Chayden that, uh, and, and yourself that made you two close friends? Um, he's a pretty smart guy. Um, he shares a similar sense of humor, I guess. Mm-hmm. And did you meet him at the Maharishi school, or had you met him prior to that, and it just so happened that you were both there? I met him at Maharishi school. Okay. Okay. Um, beyond Shaden, uh, in terms of Zach and Hoyt, John, Ellie, Zoe, among those, was there one, one or two people that you were closer with than the others, or were they all just kind of general a part of your friend group? Or I would have been closest with Zach. Okay. And was was Chayden also close with Zach? Um, not particularly. They're more as acquaintances. Okay. And then beyond um, beyond Shaden and you kind of having a similar um, sense of humor, uh, what kind of similar interests did you two have that would kind of draw you two to each other? Skateboarding. Um, we both smoked weed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And then prior to all this kind of coming about, what was ultimately your plan? It sounds like you were doing pretty well in, in school in terms of your classes. What were your postgraduate plans? Um, I was trying to look at getting a scholarship for tennis. Okay. Looking anywhere in particular? Um, I was just going to see what my, uh, my coach could do for me. Okay. What do you think you would have studied? Now there's the question. Um, I still was undecided. Yeah, you don't need to declare a major today. That's okay. Okay. And then, so about how often are you and, and Shane um, hanging out? Are you guys hanging out on a daily basis? Are you guys hanging out at school and out of school? Like in the fall of 2021, I'm just trying to get a grasp for, are you guys spending all the time together, some of the time together? How would you describe that? Well, I would say about every other day. Okay. Um, yeah, hanging out in and out of school. Okay. Did you guys have many classes together? Um, we had one class together, but that was the year before I got arrested, so no classes together. Okay. Not many. Um, and so when do you recall 
So I think that this happened um, November 2 of 2021. Do you recall when the first time, and it may have been a week, may have been a month, may have been a year, uh, but do you recall the first time ever having a conversation with Chayden about Miss Graber? And not necessarily about what happened, but just a conversation with him about, you know, some frustrations or a general awareness of her? Um, probably would have been about a month and a half before November 2nd, he would have brought up some, fr he brought up some frustrations to me talking about how he was having a hard time and he didn't feel like she was being very adequate or understanding. Okay. So, or, so probably early in the school year? Okay. So a, a month and a half before no, November 2nd would put us in like September of 2021. Is that around or about that time? Yeah. Okay. And you said that he had disclosed to you some frustrations about her teaching style or grading or what were some of the specific issues that he was having? Um, he just felt like she was very old school. Mm -hmm. um, he said he felt like he didn't care and that she had it out for him, basically. And, and having spent a full school year in her class when you were in 10th grade, and now getting to know Chayden as being pretty smart, um, when you heard about these frustrations inside your head, are you like, well, I, I've been in her class, and yeah, she's old school, but you know, it's, it's, you can get through it. Or were you in somewhat agreement with Jaden that like, yeah, based on what my friend here is saying, she's being unfair? I mean, I had already taken her class, I suppose. I guess I thought maybe just language isn't for him, like Spanish isn't for him. Sure. Because, um, I mean, it was still, like, relatively easy for me. Sure. Often I didn't fully apply myself in classes, and I could still skate by through that class mm -hmm. pretty easily. So. Mm -hmm. And about how often was he bringing this up to you from, like you said, it kind of started maybe mid-September, early in the school year. Um, about is, is this becoming, when is it all of a sudden become, going from, yeah, my buddy's kind of bitching about this teacher that he has to, wow, this guy's really having some struggles and frustrations. Was it immediately apparent that, that he was really having these issues or did that come later? Um. Please repeat your question. Yeah, sure. Um, so, for example, I have coworkers, and occasionally we'll complain about our boss. For example, now it's, sometimes it's just kind of like off the cuff frustrations, but occasionally there might be a frustration that gets told to me that like, oh, that's that's not your run of the mill concern. Like this guy's really got a beef with my boss. Um, was it apparent right away when he first started talking to you about these issues in, in mid September? Was it apparent right away that like? Wow, he's he's really really upset. Like this guy's really got an issue with Miss Graber, or or did that come later? Um, no, it was not immediately apparent. Okay, and it didn't really become apparent until uh, I mean a couple of weeks before this happened. It kind of came up suddenly. Oh, okay. Was it, was he talking about it frequently leading up to that, or was it just occasionally? It was, it was more like every other week thing. He might talk okay. about a oh man. Okay. I have a tough time in Spanish. Okay. And you said that maybe a couple weeks before November 2nd, all of a sudden it took a turn? Okay. Tell me about that, if you will. Um, well, it was just like any other day. I was eating lunch in the cafeteria with John and Shaden and a few other people that we sit with. And um, when I got up to bust my lunch trays, he kind of pulled me aside and said, Would you help me if I killed Miss Graber? Mm -hmm. And are you guys still in the lunchroom when he makes this comment to you? Yeah. Okay. But away from people, or are you still part of a group of people? Is 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 he whispering? Tell me about he, that. He, we were standing up together, so we weren't sitting or near directly adjacent to anyone. And he kind of leaned in to me and whispered it to me. Would you help me if I killed Miss Graber? Those are his words? Okay. And what was your response? 
Um, I paused for a moment and looked at him, and then I said, sure, pretty much. I said yes. Okay. And, I mean, that's not a, not a request that a friend asks you every day. Yeah. Um, and so uh, what was your immediate reaction that, like, hey, he's my best friend, he needs something, I'm here to help? Or, or what kind of thoughts were going through your mind before you say, like, yeah, sure? I mean, originally it was just trying to, yeah. As soon as he said that, I was like, holy shit. I mean, I guess I'll help you. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be a good friend, basically. Mm -hmm. And did you believe him that he was genuine and sincere, or did you think he was just still well mixed feelings? Like I wasn't sure if he was serious or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I definitely saw it as a possibility that he was being serious. Sure. Okay. All right. And um, so this happens at a day of school. Um, what's the next thing that happens? to make this all of a sudden a reality. Like he's he's expressing to you that he has a want to do this. He's asked for your help. You've indicated that you'll help. What's the next thing that happens, whether it's planning, communication, surveillance, what happens next? It would have been about a week later. And now just, we're a week before the incident itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Um, he just made a passing comment about there's a four day weekend coming up. And he said it'd probably be a good time to do it. Okay. And what was your response to that? I said, okay. I mean, it's your plan. Okay. And, I mean, you're a smart kid. You're, you're a socially, socially functionable kid, makes friends here, makes friends out there on the tennis team. Um, did you feel like, in spite of the fact that there, there could potentially be some bad consequences, legal consequences for, for getting involved in something like that, you were close enough with Shaden that it was worth it? I'll be honest, the consequences never even crossed my mind. Okay. It's just... And then um, beyond, I, I'm sure that I would imagine that when he expresses this desire to you and you say, sure, and then a week later he says, hey, four day weekend's coming up, that'd be a good time to do it. You say, okay. I'm sure at some point you, you probably ask the question of like, is this because of the grade? Is this because of her teaching style or, or what's this because of? I, I can't imagine that you just have that quick interaction that's echoed with an okay or a sure and not have a few follow-up questions? I'm honestly we had maybe a few discussions here or around I can't remember exactly when it would have been in between two weeks before it happened of him talking about not liking her teaching style being unsure of whether he'll be able to pass and Word that it would affect him moving forward. Mm, okay. In a, in a, in terms of affect him moving forward, are we talking about having to do summer school or not getting to the college that he wants to, or having to repeat a repeat a class? Or what what are the effects of him not doing well in Spanish? He had expressed a desire to me to go to a boarding school in Spain, possibly for his, you know, to add to a college resume to make him look like a more appealing candidate. Um, and he was fairly sure that it wouldn't be possible if he had failed a class like Spanish. Okay. Did he say the name of this boarding school? No, he didn't give details as to what the boarding school was. Did he talk about it a lot or just once in passing or? Um, a couple conversations about I'd probably move from Fairfield and go to Iowa City, mm -hmm. um, maybe attend the college at Des Moines. Mm -hmm. But Spain just in passing you think? I'm um, pretty sure he only brought it up the one time. Yeah. Okay. 
Had he ever um, brought up this type of request with anybody else, whether it's a kid at school that he doesn't like or, or anyone else? I believe he told, he asked Dale Herlin before he asked me if Dale Herlin would assist him in killing Ms. Graber. Okay. And how do you know that? Um, he told me, I think, shortly after he asked me, he said something along the lines of, well, I already asked Dill, but I'm pretty sure he thought I was joking. Okay. Okay. Um, would you happen to know about um, anything that might have happened at Miss Graber's residence or vehicle around homecoming? No. Any vandalism or broken windows or? See, I had never TP'd. Um, it was something I was actually kind of looking forward to, you know, throwing toilet paper around. Mm -hmm. It would have been my first actual, like, prom year or okay. whatever yeah. around that time at, at a big high school. Um, unfortunately, I missed the whole thing, and I didn't get to TP anything with okay. anybody. So I'm okay. disappointed. Okay. Now, do you know uh, who Dalton Mundia is? Okay. And what do you know about Dalton? I know he passed away. Mm -hmm. Was it? Would have been October seventh, I believe. He took his own life. Okay. And do you know why? I don't know that, that anyone except his family knows the actual sure. reason why. But I mean, rumors go around. Some people said it was because of football. I mean, I don't necessarily believe that. But mm -hmm. um, you know, I just think he was having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like yeah. life. Yeah. Um, beyond um, beyond taking these steps to kill Miss Graber, had had Shaden expressed any other um, options other than killing, whether it's vandalism or no. only that? Yeah, that was the only thing he expressed to me. Okay. And, and I, I suppose I, I misphrased this before, but he, had he ever come to you and asked you for help with any other thing of, of an illegal nature, whether it's, hey, I'm going to go slash somebody's tires or commit vandalism, or I would really want to kill this other person, was this the first and only time he's ever asked you for a favor of this nature? Correct. Okay. I would, I would imagine that he's like, hey, you have to, like, go get weed or something like that though, right? Yeah. Just to be clear, I mean, mm -hmm. you guys smoke weed together, I imagine those things happen, right? Yeah. Right. Did, did, were you aware of him having beef with anybody else besides Ms. Graber? Um, he had a cup, he had a problem with a couple of kids. Um, Aaron, I can't remember his name, it would have been Keegan, it's been it's been a long time since I've thought about those two. Sure. He had a, I think they like jacked a couple things off him, and I went on my own accord to kind of ask him like what that was about. But I mean, he didn't ask me to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone he currently, anyone else that he currently had problems with at the time. Mm -hmm. So as you're starting to have those conversations, um, two weeks and then one week in advance, um, I, I know sometimes we don't really get into our feelings, but how did that make you feel? Were you excited about the possibility of, of putting this plan into motion? Did you feel empowered, nervous, anxious? How did you feel? I would have been feeling pretty nervous at the time. I mean, at this point I was pretty convinced that he was going to go through with it. And I had already agreed, and I just didn't want to seem like a like a coward or a wuss by backing out at the last moment. Okay. And so specifically, and I'm kind of referring back to another question here, but when you say you're nervous, what are you nervous? I mean, obviously you're nervous about committing them, but what about this act makes you nervous? 
and just the fact that it could go wrong or and and how would it go wrong potentially like um, like she lives or or somebody finds you or that somebody would discover me okay And, and again, I'm referencing back to a, another question here, but you had talked about how um, consequences really didn't enter your mind at that time, but it sounds like you were aware that, like, hey, if I get discovered after yeah. helping commit murder, there's going to be some consequences here. Yeah, but I haven't spent too much time dwelling on what the consequences would be. I mean, prison seemed like a foreign concept to me, and I wasn't even sure what the consequences for murder were. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Unfortunately, I, I, I've worked my fair of, of murder cases. Um, I've had plenty of instances where even though they're a little bit remorseful, suspects are a little bit remorseful about you know, their, their time in jail, they're really not regretful of, of in the moment having to make that decision and carry it out. Um, did you feel like this is something that, although you're nervous about, you felt, um, I used the word before, empowered, but was it something that like, Hey, let's go through with this. Let's do it. Were you excited about it? Did you feel empowered? How did you feel? I wouldn't use the word excited. I mean, I guess afterwards, realizing that I had taken someone's life, sort of, I felt different. I don't know if empowered is the word I would use, but I didn't feel exactly like the same person anymore. Right. And I'm certainly not here to cast judgment on what you've been through in your life and what led you to that point, but there was a Snapchat video remo uh, reviewed of you just before where you're kind of talking to the camera about this is the last face that the teacher's going to see. Do you recall this video? It was a video? I think it was a snap picture. Yeah, a snap picture a, with the, with, I'm sorry, a snap picture with the, the caption. Excuse there. me, yes. And but I, I mean, but after that wasn't taken before. Yeah. Okay, but it, what I'm getting at is, is that to me shows somebody that's um, not ashamed of what he's doing is what I'm getting at. And so um, there had to be some pride, I would think, that was between the two of you that you're working together on this and executing the the way that you wanted to. Is that fair? There would have been some bravado. You try sure. to right. project myself as some cold-hearted killer. Right. Guess. Okay. Okay. Now, when was the, let, let's talk about in terms of the planning, you agree to help them out, you agree that, hey, there's a four-day weekend coming up. Um, what are your different options here? Explain what you mean, my options. What, what are the different um, options for a plan? Like, we could shoot her, we could use baseball bats, we could stab her, we could do all these different things. What's being discussed between you two? I really just left the planning up to him. I just, as far as the method of actually executing the murder, I left that up to him. I was only involved in the surveilling beforehand and then the actual act itself. Okay. So in terms of his plans, did he discuss with you other possibilities besides the baseball bat of like, hey, we could run her off the road, we could stab her, we could do these other things? Was it always going to be in Chautauqua Park with the baseball bat, you two? It was always going to be in the park. Okay. That was um, something we discussed. But um, as far as the baseball bat, that was something he kind of just brought up offhand. I mean, I guess we'd agreed that we could use a baseball bat, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what he brought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And what type of equipment did you use? Obviously, a baseball bat. Um, what what type of other equipment did you either stage out there or bring with you that day? Um, I brought only myself, and I wore some gloves and a, a cap. Um, Jaden, I guess, had a backpack filled with a bag of water, um, a screwdriver, and a hammer, all to destroy her phone if we found it on her person. Okay. 
Um, he also brought the bed itself. What's the water for? Uh, to destroy the phone. Okay. Water screwdriver and hammer to destroy her phone. Yeah. He also brought a pocket knife and he said, well, just in case we need to use it. Presumably to, to stab her? To stab her. Okay. Okay. And then was this always um, discussed between you two or text messages between you two, Snapchat, emailed? How are you guys communicating? Um, through Snapchat or Instagram, I believe, when we could. Okay. And then at any time from, uh, other than Dill Herlin, was there any time when, when there was the thought of bringing someone else into the fold to assist you two? Um, after it had happened, I think I contacted Zach, I believe, and I asked him, or, or John, I, I'm not exactly sure which one I asked, but it was either Zach or John, or perhaps both, I asked to help bury something. I was pretty vague with it, but I would have been referring to Miss Graver. Okay. Okay. But that was the only time involving someone else came up. Right. And I didn't bring that up with right. Jay. Yeah, go ahead with your question if, if you like catch up on my notes. At any time during this, do you guys, like, when you're planning this, do you ever see or make a list of items that you'll need, like a to-do list or I kind of an itinerary? Involved in making a list of any kind of like what to do, what to bring. I just assumed that he would do all of that. And he never showed you a list? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so what type of, uh, you had talked about the items that he showed up with. What about uh, the wheelbarrow? Um, well, we're kind of jumping ahead, but the wheelbarrow would have, I grabbed it from his house. Um, he left it there for me to retrieve and I would have just gone to his house at around 12 and then grabbed it. We were supposed to meet outside of his house at that point and then go bury Miss Graber. Oh, so the wheelbarrow came after? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just, okay. And, and I'm just trying to get all the equipment <laughs> identified. Right. Um, okay, so we can get to that later. But in terms of, you got your water screwdriver, hammer, uh, all in a backpack? Is that um, correct? I'm pretty sure he brought it all in a okay. backpack. Anything else? No. Okay. Uh, what about you? What kind of stuff did you bring? You said gloves um, and... Your own baseball bat, or no, just no. A, a wool cap and just a wool gloves. Cap. Okay. And how many total baseball bats are we talking? Uh, he had, he just had his. But was there any else out there that we may have missed? Nothing, just the one. Just the one. Okay. Do you remember what color that one was? Uh, it would have been gray with orange writing or designs. Possibly like flames. I can't exactly remember. But it was uh, it was dark gray or black with the uh, orange designs of writing. But none of the bats that were at your house were that bad? No. Okay. Okay. And let's talk about, um, in the lead up, surveillance. What, what kind of surveillance are you guys doing? So it would have been on Monday, November 1st. I would have been hanging out with John and Braden believe his name was. I was not, I was more of an acquaintance with Brayden, mm -hmm. um, introduced through John, but I would have been hanging out with John and Brayden at the skate park. Mm -hmm. And then I checked my phone and I remembered I was supposed to go do this surveillance with Chayden. And so I kind of said, I told him, hey, I got to go do something. Brayden, can I borrow your bike so I can get there faster? And he said, sure. And this would have been in the afternoon? Um, it would have been around somewhere between 2 and 3. Okay. 
in the afternoon. Braden's bike? Braden's bike. Okay. And I left him my skateboard as assurance. And so I biked from Obi Nelson Park to uh, Fairfield High School. That's where you met him? Um, Chayden was already inside meeting with Miss Graber over, I guess, his grades or excess schoolwork you need to get caught up on. This is Monday? This is Monday. Okay. Okay. And so, so you're standing out waiting for him? Um, yeah. Okay. And then from there, where do you go? From there, he, um, he came out and I guess he said she had some other stuff she had to finish before she would leave. And so he went over to the bike rack, which was um, farther away from where her van was. At the time, I didn't know what car she drove. Mm -hmm. And he goes and he leaves and he gets on his bike and I'm still standing near the football field, actually like coincidentally a few feet away from her van. Mm -hmm. And I begin to walk my bike up over to see what's going on with Chayden. And then that's when I see her come out of the school and get into the van. And then I followed it to on Chicago bike. on bike. Okay. Um, did did you acknowledge her when she came out? Did you guys see each other, say hi, hi Miss Graber, hi Jeremy, nothing like that? No. Okay. I don't think she saw me. Okay. Okay. And then Chayden caught up with me when we were at the park. And how does he catch up with you? He had his bike. He had his bike, okay. He, he already knew that she went to Chautauqua Park, mm -hmm. and so he biked there when he saw that I was gone. And then um, I think we watched her walk the trail once around, and then we just left. Okay. And where are you watching her from? On the trail itself. You're on the trail. Mm -hmm. Are you 50 yards behind her? About. Are you are you um, walking our bikes along the trail? Okay. A good distance. Behind. Does she ever look back and do like that? Anything of that nature? No. So as far as you could tell, you guys never make eye contact. She's not aware that you're back there. I can't remember if it was the day of or if it had been on Monday, but we did end up um, bumping into her and saying. Hi, I'm. I'm not exactly sure whether that was that day or the day of, but yeah. Okay. Just hi. Um, it would have been uh, like hi. How are you? Wave and then keep walking. Okay. You both did. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, are, are, are you and um, Chayden in the, the day before during the surveillance or the day of smoking any weed, um, having a drink, anything of that nature? Um, well, on the day of, I was at the park with Zoe beforehand, and her and I were smoking weed okay. together at one of the park shelters. Okay. Anybody else besides you two just smoking weed? No, just two of us. Okay. But beyond that, you guys, you weren't doing any psychedelics or heavy drinking, anything of that nature? No. Okay. All right. And did, um, did Shaden ever indicate to you of why is a four day weekend good as opposed to a school night? I always just assumed because we wouldn't have to be at school so he could have the time to make the preparations okay. and we knew she would be at school or I guess he knew and so we went off of that knowledge that we would have time to prepare beforehand and we would know where she was at. Okay. Okay. And so going into November 2nd, what is the agreed, you, you've done your surveillance, um, presumably you've discussed what equipment you're going to need at different times, what ultimately is the plan Be going into it? Before you get there, before it actually starts happening, in your words, what's the plan? Hit her with a bat and drag her off of, off of the trail. Okay.
he have an area picked out? Um, he had that already picked out. And I found out when he dragged me off after I said goodbye to Zoe, and then I followed him to where he had already had all his equipment laid out. Okay. And was that equipment what we just described before? Yes. Okay. And he had it laid out already? Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of things is he saying? Is he saying, like, I'm going to fucking kill that bitch? Is he not saying anything? Is he... Is he describing to you what you two are going to do? I mean, it's 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 pretty easy and straightforward to say we're going to hit her, we're going to drag her off. But I, I imagine that there was a little bit more color in the conversation. I mean, I discussed how, um, or he said he would just walk up behind her and hit her, and I said, well, okay, I guess I can stand a little farther up the trail and look out and make sure no one's coming from this direction. Okay. Like in front of where she's walking? Yeah, ahead okay. of where she was okay. walking. In front of where she's walking, is that closer to the parking lot or are you talking closer about that long stretch? Lot. Closer to the parking lot. Okay. Does this look familiar in yeah. terms of her yeah. walking path? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's not going to be completely accurate, but just for my frame of reference since I'm not a, a Fairfield guy can you put it an X generally where about she would have been walking at that time um, well she would have been walking along here sure yep and then roughly yeah you can pretty much see it right around here is the access trail so you would have hit her around Probably here. But right about there, then where are you positioned at? Don't mark it, but where are you positioned Just at? Just a little farther up. A little farther ahead. Right around okay. here. And then we have on the trail. And then he's hiding somewhere in the the, the tree the tree area? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And so you're kind of keeping a lookout here, and he's probably keeping a lookout down that way? You can see down there. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Would you mind just putting your initial right next to that X? It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. But but no other options were discussed. Like, he never contacted you and said, like, God, it'd be nice just to have a gun to shoot her. Or it'd be nice to, to you know, catch her, you know, in the vehicle, anything of that nature? No, not to me. No. Okay. And you said he had his equipment laid out. What equipment does he have laid out? Um... It would have been the screwdriver, hammer, baseball bat, bag of water, pocket knife. And then were you, you instructed to bring any equipment yourself? No. Okay. And then, so, the, the plan is to, he's going to hit her in the head, you're going to stand watch out, and then you're going to together remove her from the trail. What's the plan after that? There, there wasn't really a plan beyond that. It's just improvisation. Okay. Like hide the body, bury the body, stage the body? At that time, we were going to hide the body. It had come up that we could try and make it look like it was a suicide of some sort layer on the tracks. But that just didn't seem right. It didn't seem like it would work either. Okay. Um, once the, if the plan is to maybe hide the body or, or maybe it's discussed to have it staged so it looks like it was hit by a train, um, is there any further discussion about like, you know, sooner or later her body's going to get found and they're going to start, people are going to start asking questions. Is there any discussion about maybe we should run away, um, maybe a, a suicide type situation, anything of that nature? Like beyond November 2nd, what's the plan? Um, I guess in our arrogance, we kind of assumed that nobody would ever find her okay. in the spot that we left her. Okay. But um, so after we had, um, after he had hit her, um, I told him like, "Holy shit! Like, make sure, make sure you got her. Like, make sure it's done." And so then. He hit her a couple more times, and then we dragged her off. I'm pretty
pretty sure I did that by myself. I dragged her off. He was up looking along the trail. He had already put the bat back where he had it with the rest of his stuff. And then um, I dragged her back to pretty much where the equipment was at. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I heard some like gurgling coming from Miss Graber and I grabbed the bat and that's when I you know, made sure that mm -hmm. she didn't have to continue living in that state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, backing up just a bit, um, was that the one and only day that you were a part of surveillance on that Monday? Or had you been out there before with Jaden or by yourself to kind of keep an eye on things? No, that was Monday was the only day. Was the only day. Did okay. Did he indicate that he had been out there other than that? Um, I believe he did. I'm not 100% sure, but he did know for a fact that she goes to Chautauqua Park after okay. she works. Okay. All right. And then, um, so tell me about like the day of. You guys don't have school, right? No school. And you had been out there. Um, you were, was it just a coincidence that you had met up with, with Zoe at the same time, same general place that you're going to meet up with Chayden? Um, well, I wanted to see Zoe, and that was the only time we could work it in. Um, and I also had to be at Chautauqua Park, and so I. She lived very close, so mm -hmm. that's just where we met. Okay. And then what else are you doing throughout the day? I mean, this doesn't happen until the later afternoon. You, you meet up with her right before you smoke a little weed, but leading up to that, what, what kind of stuff are you going to do throughout the day? Um, oh, man, it's, it's hard to remember. Back sure. that far. Mm -hmm. um, I might have been asking if there was someone I could hang out with. I'm pretty sure John said he was busy, mm -hmm. was grounded or something or other. Um, I probably would have just been at home on my phone or maybe doing homework. I'm not exactly sure, but I was probably most likely at home. Was there ever any discussions with between you and Shaden about, I mean, it seems obvious, but any, any discussions between you two where it's discussed, this cannot be talked about, bragged about, discussed with anyone ever? Or was that just kind of assumed between you two? I guess you would say it was assumed. It didn't come up and it certainly didn't come up in conversation. Okay. Um, he did say something along the lines of, well, if they catch one of us, the other one won't tell on them. That's basically what he said. The other one will not tell? Will not tell. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of, a, it, it seemed apparent, uh, it, certainly on his side, that there was a code of silence between the two of you. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. And at any time did he ever uh, threaten you with, with violence, like before, during, or after? No. No. Um, were you ever concerned that he might, like, try to get rid of the witness, meaning you? No. Okay. And so at this point, um, if you don't mind, uh, one of the things I sometimes like to do is just kind of open it up for an, an open narrative. And by that, I mean, I'm gonna try to shut up long enough for you just to uh, explain your recollection of things, how they went down. I'm sure I'll probably have some, some follow-up questions when you're through, but sometimes just kind of like putting it all on the table and it gives us some perspective on, on what we're looking at. So if you wouldn't mind, um, just beginning, uh, you're, you're with Zoe, you're smoking weed, and at some point I assume Chayden shows up, if you wouldn't mind taking it from there. Uh, sure, so I had just, knocked Zoe's pipe off the table and broke it and um, her vape had died. She was getting ready to go home and I said, yeah, that's great. And then uh, that's when Chayden came to the park and I said, hold up, there goes Chayden. I think I had told her and I was going to be meeting him afterwards. And so I 
take off running because he completely missed where I told him I was going to be at, and so he ran ran past down the trail, and so I got up and I chased after him. Eventually, I caught up to him, um, and then we walked back over towards where that access trail is, and then Jaden, I would have kept walking towards the access trail, and I think I went over to Zoe, and I said like, some of those lines of, hey, you should probably go, um, it's nice seeing you, bye, and then she left, and then I went down to the access trail where Jaden was at. Um, that's when I saw all the things he brought. Um, and we discussed a general plan of, um, uh, like I'll stand up here and be lookout. Um, you'll walk up behind her and then I think we walked back out onto the trail to wait for Miss Craver to show up. And um, I can't remember if we saw her drive in or if we noticed her van and then knew she was there, but eventually she was there and um, we bumped into her on the trail while we were looking for her and you know, said, oh, hi, how are you? And then kept walking back down towards the access trail. We went, we were kind of in front of the, we would have been close, closer to the parking lot. And so we took the quicker way to the access trail while she was walking around. And then, you know, we waited there with me being lookout and him standing on the access trail with the bat in his hands. And then he kind of gave me like a nod saying, like, here she comes. And I gave him the signal that it's all clear. And then she walked by and he hit her in the back of the head. And then I said like, holy shit, make sure she's, make sure she's dead. And so he hit her a couple more times and then I, dragged her off towards the access trail and then I wasn't sure whether she was alive or not and I took the bat and I, I made sure that she wasn't alive or breathing and then Chayden wasn't there at that moment. He was standing out on the trail, I guess making sure that nobody else was coming along. Eventually he did come back there and I think he said like, like what was that? What was that noise? Did you did you did you hit her again? I was like um, I said, I mean yeah, I I did and then we grabbed her and we moved her towards like a strip of woods that separates the path from the access trail. Um, And then that's where we left her. Um, I found her car keys. I handed them to Chayden. Um, we didn't find her phone. Uh, and so the bag of water was like leaking and I didn't want to bring it into the car. And so I took the bag of water and I walked to the end of the parking lot and I threw it down a storm drain and then Chayden got into the van and came by and picked me up and I jumped into the van and then we drove off to a to a spot I knew about where I figured it might take a while before anyone found the van. Um, that would be the end of Midland, Glasgow. Um, And then uh, he drove the van behind the, 
trees where it was found. And then we started walking and originally we were thinking like, well, let's just walk it. It's a long way to walk. Um, then I was like, I could probably call Habib. And so that's when I pulled out my phone, used the last couple of percent battery that it was on to call Habib. Um, I think I called him twice before he picked up. I told him where we were at. And I asked him if he could come pick me up. I told him somebody had ditched me and Chayden there after we smoked. And then so he came by and picked us up. And um, he was already late for soccer. He told us that. And so we said that he could just drop us off at Chautauqua Park. Pretty sure Chayden. Pretty sure Chayden had left his bike there. And so he had to, he had to go get his bike. And then Habib dropped us off there, and then I went home, pretty sure. Let me, let me take a minute to remember exactly what happened after that. Yeah. I believe I would have went home after that. And, um, I think I went home and took a shower and then ate something and took a nap after that. I was pretty exhausted. Um, uh, me and Chayden had agreed to meet up at 12 o'clock at his house to finish disposing, um, move the scraper into a different spot. Midnight? At midnight. Okay. I did get something wrong. Let me move back. Sure. Um, I knew I was missing something, but after um, Habib dropped us off, I actually went to Chayden's house with him, and he handed me a small green bag with a tarp inside of it and he said like make sure you can bring this out of your house with you and you sneak out tonight and like I'll meet you at 12. Mm -hmm. Does Habib hear this conversation? No this is after he's dropped us off. After. Okay. Me and Chayden have walked from Chautauqua to his house mm -hmm. and then he says this to me he says if right you take this make sure you can bring it with you and at 12 mm -hmm. we'll meet up. And then at 12, I snuck out of my house. Um, he had left his wheelbarrow in his driveway for me to come and grab and move for him. Um, and I just grabbed the wheelbarrow. I think I had a shovel with me. I put that in there, threw the tarp in there, and then I pushed the wheelbarrow down in front of the high school to Chautauqua Park. Um, and when I got there, Chayden was already there and he was using a flashlight to scrub at the blood that was left on the trail from where we had hit her and dragged her. Um, And we kind of just worked from where he originally hit her down to the access trail, um, just using lights to kind of wash away and wipe away any blood that we found and pick up any bloody leaves, um, try and disguise any trail we would have left. Um, and then we found Miss Graver's body. Um, we moved it into the wheelbarrow and then rolled it along the train tracks to where we 
eventually decided we'd move far enough and then we we rolled her down the side of the tracks and then placed the tarp over her body. Um, the wheelbarrow was kind of falling apart and it had blood on it so we you know kind of tried to kick the wheel off of it so it would look like a piece of trash and we left that on top of the tarp. Chayden's house with him and um, he grabbed a pack of Alka-Seltzer out of his, uh, grabbed that and we went to my house and we, we proceeded to get drunk and then he left and went home and I passed out of my bed. over to John's house where we had a small fire and then I think it was starting to get dark at that point um, my dad came and picked Zoe and myself up and we dropped Zoe off at her place and then my dad drove us home And that night, I sent several text messages to John, explaining to him what happened between me and Shaden and Mrs. Graber. And at like four in the morning, I was arrested. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's a lot of good detail. Um, just a couple follow-ups. Um, once she walks down that path and uh, you and Chayden give each other the, the, the head nod of here she comes and you're giving him the head nod of basically all clear, um, did she need to be distracted in any way or did he just run up pop her without her ever knowing anybody was behind her ever or did he have to give chase to her or how would you describe that? Um, it's a very vivid image. He had these big yellow work gloves on and he kind of quietly just walked up behind her with long strides taking her slower gait and then he just, yeah, he just swung really hard and at that point I was kind of walking towards her down the trail because I knew we were going to have to um, move her pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then he he just, um, yeah, he was just snuck up behind her with the bat and hit her yeah. in the head. 
And at any time, does it appear, if, if you're watching, I mean, because I walk on wooded trails or, or jog on them, typically I, I can feel if somebody's coming up behind me. Um, was there ever like a this in, in the moment before, or did she get hit square in the back because it assumed she never, she never saw it coming? Yeah. Okay. And she saw me, and I was standing on the trail and walking towards her, and I, and I had a face mask up, and I pulled it down, and I guess she was just looking at me while he walked up behind her. Um, I would assume for, for her being out there by herself to see an individual with a mask in front, that would be startling. Did she, did she stop? Um, no, and that's kind of why I pulled the mask down, because I didn't want to startle her. Oh, okay. Reason. So that's the whole reason I took the mask off. Okay, got it. Okay, you had mentioned before um, about how once you and, and Shaden make your way from where Zoe was, or once you meet up, you see all the equipment light up, at one point you actually cross paths with Miss Graber and you exchange pleasantries. About how, how long was that um, interaction in time? Are we talking? A few seconds. A few seconds. Um, Where's that at, Jeremy? Uh, that would have been on the trail in front of the parking lot. Right where the arms come down, where they have it blocked. Remember at November 1st, Pretty they much. put the arms down so you can't drive around. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of have to walk around those arms and then you make the right to start on the trail. Yeah, it would have been between those arms. It, yeah. And where the trail turns yeah. off to the right to get on it. Like if you were to go from the parking lot and just walk straight to the trail, that was a roundabout where it was at. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, once she struck, and, and would you say it was square in the back of the head, base of the skull, top of the head? Just square in the back. Square in the back. Um, and is this um, Shaden coming up with, with one hand on the back and striking, or was it two hands as if he's playing softball or baseball? Yeah. Okay. Like that. Okay. And, and shortly after that first strike, that's when you guys go into concealment mode? Is that fair? Um, right after that, I told him, holy shit, like, make sure, make sure it's done. Okay. And that's when he hit her two more times, and then... On the trail? On the trail. Before you guys move Before her. Before we move her. He hits her once, she goes down, you come over, make sure she's done, two more. Yeah. Is she lying on her face? She, she would have been on her face. On her face, two more shots to the back of the head? Back kind of side area. Yeah. Back side area of the head, okay. And then that's when you two, at the conclusion of those two shots, that's when just you start to move her and he is lookout? I think he originally started helping me and then I was on my own dragging her and then I wasn't even sure where he was at. I just knew I had to move her okay. from where she was. Okay. Um, is she, um, you'd be surprised with, with individuals who suffer head trauma, how long they can try to communicate even after suffering that head trauma. Um, you talked about the gurgling. Is she trying to utter any words, um, stop, help, lie, anything? No, I'm, when I was dragging her, I, I saw her hand just opening and closing. That was, that was the only thing I saw. And then there was kind of just like a, just a breath coming out. Mm -hmm. And when you say her hands are opening and closing, are you dragging her by holding her wrists or her ankles or? I've got one arm in both of my hands. Dragging one arm. Her. Okay. That's Is it that hand that's opening up? No, it's the other it's one. It's the other one. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Um, again, for the purposes of full disclosure, um, and also for the record, it appears my dictaphone has died, but fortunately we have audio video up there. Um, um, again, this is um, hindsight being 2020, and for the sake of full disclosure, um, this is a pretty, I would, I would characterize as a pretty passionate murder, as opposed to a, a distant one where it's not like you climbed up into a tree with a sniper rifle after then ran away kind of coldly. There's, this seemed to be very personal, certainly from Chayden's point of view. Um, are you or Chayden, during the course of the concealment, saying, fuck you, bitch, you got what you deserved, 
you know. No, there was none of that. None of that. No. Certainly so not from not from you is what you're saying. And not from Chayden. And not from Chayden either. No. N no comments directed at all um, to her as this is going on. It was pretty much just anything that was said was like. What just happened, or was that you, or grab her keys? Those were pretty much the only things that were said between him and me. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Um, anything, any, any items taken out of the van? You guys move the van, you're looking around before you leave it there. Are you doing a quick check to see if, first of all, have I left anything of my person here? And then is there anything of hers that we want to take with us? Uh, we did a quick check to see if her phone was there. There was no phone. Um, I ended up going through a wallet looking for the phone. I found uh, some cash and we took that and tossed the wallet out into the woods somewhere okay. around the van. Do you remember how much it was? It was $75, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And um, it was divided 35 and 40, is that correct? And how was it uh, decided that one of you would get 35 and one would get 40? Um, he gave me 40 because, I guess, I'm pretty sure he said he dragged me into it, so he gave me 40. And then there was that. Yeah. Okay. I'm a stickler for, for wording, um, but you said, I guess he figured. I'm not exactly sure. Did he say said, that? But he was along the lines of, um, it was like my plan or you had to, you had right. to do more than I yeah. did. Something to that extent. Something along okay. that Okay, all right. Okay. What was Chayden wearing? I believe it was black sweatpants and a gray hoodie. And do you know what happened to those clothes? No. Do you remember what color his bike was? <sighs> Definitely don't remember what color his bike was. How did you get to the park? Um, I walked from my house. Are you 100% sure it was Monday that Chayton had his conference with his teacher? Yes. And was his mom there? Now I redact my statement. I'm no longer 100% sure if it was Monday um, because I do remember his mom was there during one of their meetings. I'm not sure if he had more than one meeting. Um, he might have just been there doing work, but it could have been. On Monday? On Monday, but I know he was in the building with Ms. Graver. Okay. But when you're doing the surveillance and he's in the building or whatever he's doing, what part of the schools, because we got your SNAP map, where are you at around the school or a little bit everywhere? Um, I would have been leaning on the bike pretty much in front of the bell next to the football field, right along that fence separating the football field from the street. And this is Monday? Yeah. Are you ever around the track? And I got the, the track field track? Yeah. No. And then what about like in front, like in those houses across the street from where Miss Graber? Yeah, that's where I would have been standing. Like I guess I would have been. The bell tower's to on the sidewalk right in front of the, tr the yeah. track and the football yes. field. Yeah. But those houses across the street, did you ever go across the street so you could see, basically look at the front of the school? I don't think so, but I do remember um, walking over towards the school itself because I was unsure where Chayden was and then I did see Miss Graber leave and that's when I got on the bike. And she walked one lap that Monday around? Uh, we're not sure. We watched her walk 
a lap and then we just left. We're not sure how many laps she walked. Okay. Okay. Um, about how long, once she's hit, about how long are you guys out there before you're out of there? Are we talking all this was done in 15 minutes, an hour, half an hour? What are we thinking? Um, well, So yeah, about 10 to 15 minutes, and then we got in her van and drove off. Okay. And then when you guys went back and moved the body again, were you wearing the same clothes? I was. And what about Shaden? Was he wearing the same clothes that he wore when, he, when you guys did the murder itself? I don't think he was wearing the same clothes, no. Do you remember what he was wearing when you guys were moving? I don't recall it. So um, once you see her um, drop after that first initial hit, you go up there and, and, and you make the indication or, or issue the direction to Shaden to like make sure she's not breathing. And then you say that he follows up with, with two shots. Um, as you're moving her, she's opening, closing her hands. You say that, you know, by now we're committed, we're in this. Um, and you feel the need to, to finish the job about how, and again, I'm not going to hold you to the exact number, but about how many times do you strike her to, to finish things off? Five, more or less. Approximately five. Um, and was there something about her body movement or lack thereof that made you think, I'm done at five, as opposed to I need to do five more? Um, well, after five, it kind of just felt like... It's, a, it's, a, it's almost too much, it's just like, I didn't want to have to touch the bat to begin with, and then I, she was still alive, and I was waiting for a moment, because I, after I heard that last, that breath, I waited for a moment to see where Chayden was at, if he was going to come around, and then he didn't, mm -hmm. and so then I picked up the bat, and I think it was around five, and I was like, okay, I couldn't do any more, and I put the bat in. And, and how did you wind up with the bat in your hands? Because um, he had left it back there when he was standing out on the trail. He didn't have it with him. He had, after he, I had dragged the body, he probably did drag it with me. It's, it's all, no. I think after I had dragged the body, he went back there and set the bat down and then went back out onto the trail while I finished moving her a little farther off to the access trail. Okay, okay. So at one point, you don't know whether he hands it to you or he sets it down and you grab it as you're dragging and think, I need he, to finish her off? He definitely didn't hand it to me. He set it down around okay. where I picked it up and okay. used it. And then you made a comment about how when you guys went out there around midnight that he's using a flashlight to scrub blood off the trail? That was unclear. He was using a flashlight to see where the blood was at and then using like disinfectant wipes oh, to scrub okay. the blood God. off the trail. Okay. And how come you, you said originally that you were going to meet Chayden mm -hmm. at Chayden's house and you're going to take the wheelbarrow mm -hmm. down there and do all this stuff. Why is, why is Chayden not there? That was what I was wondering for um, a little while and I stood outside of his house and that's when I would have made those snapchats the one you were talking about mm -hmm. with the last it would be the last thing you ever see um and a picture of the wheelbarrow and then i decided well he knows where to go and then so i walked there by myself and he was already there i guess he didn't we weren't very clear because he didn't have his phone at the time his mom had confiscated it and so it was very hard for him to be able to communicate and we just said we would meet at 12. we actually didn't specify where i guess he told me to come get the wheelbarrow i assumed he would be there too, but he wasn't. And so then I went to, Jeff, or to Chautauqua Park. Okay. And then um, you talked about how you guys are, are scanning the path that you took that night. You're picking up bloody leaves. What are you doing with the bloody leaves? Just putting them in the plastic bag that held tarp. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with them after? Um, well, after we had, um, Realizing I skipped around too much. It's okay. I missed too many things. Um, after we had rolled her down the 
tracks a little longer and then left her there. Um, I took off the gloves that I wore, took off the gloves that he wore. Um, we picked up the wipes that we could find and we stuffed them all into that bag and then kicked it down a storm drain on Low Street on our way back to his house to pick up the drinks. When you walk back, how do, how do you get to, because we don't see you in front of the school. We walked along the tracks. Okay. Um, any of you, either of you, um, oddly enough, you see people take trophies from after they commit a murder, whether they robbed the person after the fact. You said you were looking for her, her phone, didn't find that. You said you took the keys, but that was more for, I imagine, concealment of the van. Any other items of her that you took with you? Um, just the 40 bucks. Just the, out of the wallet, mm -hmm. out of the wallet, okay. Um, one thing that we noticed was that when her body was found, pants are pulled down, shirts up, and then she actually has a few garments of clothing that are completely away from the body. What's your explanation for that? When we were dragging her, her pants started to come down. I was trying to pull them up. Chayden just said they're going to fall off. And then so we actually left her in that dividing area mm -hmm. with the pants down, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, the sweater, the green sweater, I think, came off when we were dragging her. We were pulling it along. It kept slipping, losing our grip. And that came off, and we threw that into the wheelbarrow and then finished dragging her, and then we rolled her down, and he kind of just grabbed the sweater and chucked it off after her. Okay. Um, forgive me for asking this, but if I don't ask it, somebody's going to ask me why I didn't ask it, but um, was there any sexual motivation behind why she was found with pants down and shirt up? No. No. Um, and, and you can, are you speaking also for Chayden with that regard, too? I wasn't with him 24-7 after this happened, but I'm pretty sure he didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Okay. It was just... You see what I'm getting at, though? Like, there was no... I understand. Yeah, there was no taking five minutes by yourself to do anything of, of like, masturbation or anything of that nature? No. Okay. okay. You said that it was just you and Shaden. Correct. And then at some point you had asked either, either John and or Zach... Mm -hmm to help bury the body. In any of this, was there any other person actively involved in either the planning, execution, or the cover up? No. Okay, so if Logan Klein's running his mouth saying he was involved in the murder, he's just running his mouth? Just talking shit. He's, just he, he basically was supplying you your drugs. One of the people. Or it, he had the party house, he had the trap house that everybody. Exactly was sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, why did you send the Snapchat to John? I'm pretty sure I even said it in the snaps, but I just couldn't hold it in. I had to, I had to tell somebody. I, I mean, yeah, I had to tell somebody. Basically, in the was, snaps, it sounded like there was also, you didn't get it off your chest. Yeah, there was also, I guess, a, a want to sound, I don't know, cool or cold or badass just not sound like a, a pussy i guess essentially i guess i just wanted to sound seem cool mm -hmm. at some point do you ask somebody if you can get rid of items at their house so at john's house when we were there on um, wednesday i think i asked him i think i said like man i really hate these shoes I think I could probably just burn them at your place. And then he said no. And I do believe later during the text messages, I asked if I could burn the clothes at his house, burn the clothes, because he said, you got to get rid of those. And I was like, you're probably right. And I asked him if I could burn the clothes at his house. Okay. Other than, other than John and then asking Zach to help move, which he doesn't show up and help do, is there anybody else that you admit that you killed Mrs. Grape or two? No one else that I admitted it to, no. Do you rem what about your gaming buddies? Oh, Jesus, right. There would have been Jack Grohl and Ben. Yes, those two um, were the 
first people I told, I think. And yeah, that completely slipped my mind. I apologize, but I once again was telling them to seem, I guess, cool or edgy or cold or yeah. And in on Snapchat world, what was your name? I would have been Darker Wolf thirteen seventy five. And do you remember Ben's? I believe it was Ben Allen and some numbers, and then Jack Roll would have been Mr. Awesome Dude, I'm pretty sure. But I already, I, I had changed the names, and when you change the names, you don't see their original usernames, so I'm not exactly sure, but pretty sure. And then when you said that you admitted to them, are you to just text or? Um, texts and a picture, I think, of the wheelbarrow and a selfie of myself wearing the mask with the caption on it. And in the wheelbarrow, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like a, a foot pump. Right, we did bring a pump in case the wheelbarrow's tire went flat, because he, Chayden said it has a tendency to do that, and so he just threw the pump in there as a, an extra measure. But at, at any of these items that you picked up or acquired from Chayden or that you saw laid out in the park. Did you purchase any of those or know where those came from? Um, or I know that I did bring a shovel because we thought we were going to dig a grave, but obviously it was November and the ground was frozen. Um, I didn't buy anything specifically for the purpose of that, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the things were just things chain had lying around the house. Did you do any test? Test holes trying to dig anywhere? Um, we used the, originally we tried the ground and we were like, Where at? Um, would have been along the tracks, pretty close to the access trail, and we realized, yeah, we're not going to be able to dig. And so then we used the shovels to kind of turn over some of the bloody ground to just turn it over and make it look like somebody was moving the ground for some reason instead of a bloody mess. And the holes that you did, dug, were those near, not on the same side of the railroad tracks, because you got the access, the tracks, the other side of the railroad tracks, and then the wooded area again? Which side of the tracks, the, close, the side closer to the tracks, or the other, the further side of the tracks? The closer side of the tracks. It would have been closer to the access trail and closer to Chautauqua Park, where it would have been turning over the soil. Okay. Um, so I was at your house uh, the following morning. I think I'm the one that woke you up. Uh, since that time, you've been in police detention. Uh, since that time, have you had any communication with, with Chayden? Sure, yeah. Here? And, and what kind of communication has that been like? Um, I think originally, like the first couple of days that we were out together on the, in the pod that they've got, the mm -hmm. juvenile detention, he was telling me to say something about there being like eight people from Atumwa involved in the killing of Miss Craver. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just told him, sure, whatever. Okay. Always seemed kind of stupid to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make any threats towards you? No. You make any threats towards him? No. Okay. Did he ask you if what you said? When the cops came? Um, he did. I said I shut up and lawyered up and then um, I asked him what he said and he kind of just said, I can't, I can't exactly remember what he said, but he said he made up a very convincing lie that would throw them off, something along that line. And, um, <laughs> Um, and I said, okay, and that's when he was like, yeah, so tell him about the eight dudes from Atumwa who were involved wearing masks, the masked men. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it, so he's your best friend. Um, you, uh, uh, some of the conversations you've had since then just seem kind of stupid, to be honest with you, right? I mean, would you characterize some of these conversations or these ideas or um, plans as being stupid, or how would you describe them? Well, since being in detention. Since being in detention. 
there was only those like few first couple of days that we talked anything about the case. Mm -hmm. I mean, since then it's all just been about stuff that goes on in there. Like, okay. We don't really talk about the outside very much. And, and so everyone's clear that they're they're supposed to be sequestered, right. so they're not supposed to have contact. Right. Yep. Just so you're aware. Yep. Um, and so. Um, Looking back now, nearly a year and a half removed from November 2nd, what's your opinion of him? Still consider him a good friend? He's kind of, I don't know how I never picked up on this because apparently there were plenty of people around me who did. Um, I guess I was too beguiled by him, I don't know. Um, but now I can definitely see clearly he's kind of sneaky, arrogant, I mean, I don't know, it just... I don't feel easy talking to him anymore, and when I see people start to trust him, I just like, I don't know, it makes me feel off, just like watching people make the same mistakes that I did. Do you think it's weird that Shaden can't move the wheelbarrow? I mean, I mean it's really at his house, the crap's at his house, I mean, why are you going to his house and... There was no rational thought really at the point for those two days and then so no I didn't even I didn't even think twice about it but now looking back it obviously looks very shady but yeah now looking like of course like you said hindsight's always 2020 but at the time there was just no rational thought going on mm -hmm. what about, I mean the school you knew there, there were cameras in the school yeah that was something else that I thought of like huh there's cameras I, I, I guess I mean it's dark They'll probably see me, but whatever. I mean, it's not a normal thing, somebody walking at 12 yeah. and down the street with a wheelbarrow. And um, I brought that up to him, and he said, oh, well, you can just tell people you're moving some tools for a friend. At midnight on a school night. At midnight on a school night. Okay. Which storm drain? Okay, um, I can give you the general area. I know it was on Low Street. Pretty sure it was Low and C. Um, it would have been on the, let's see, I'm going to try, it's going to take me a little second here to get the directions squared away. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be on here, would it? No, oh, actually. Yeah, it would. No, it's not far enough. Not quite far enough? Not far enough. Okay. You can look, but yeah. Um, oh yeah, the tracks go right there, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, so you come out the tracks. And then we swing a right onto, um, I'm not sure. D Street. D Street. There we go. I'm pretty sure that would have been the one. And then we're walking down D Street till we hit low, and then we take a left, and we're going down low, and then I'm pretty sure on C Street, I was just like, hey, we can just kick this down the storm drain. And that's what we did. Do you remember what corner? That's what I was trying to remember. Um, it would have been on the north side of Low Street. Um, and I think it was uh, the northeast corner on Low and C. But I know for a fact it was on the north side of Low Street. At one point when we were talking about like beefs with kids and stuff like that and issues with kids, there's an altercation with Sergio Sharp. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, John Burnett had gotten into an altercation. He got set up by a girl and then kind of got the crap beat out of him by some grown men at Chautauqua Park. And when he told me about that, I was furious, and I immediately like contacted as many people as I knew. And I guess our plan was to like go to Sergio's house, TP's house, egg it, maybe crack a winch or crack a tail light on his car or something, kind of just give him a spook and let him know that like that wasn't cool to like beat up a kid or a grown dude. Um, that didn't go down. He came out with a gun and started waving it around. Sergio or Sergio's dad? Um, the dad came out with a gun and started waving it around, kind of scared everybody off. And then reluctantly I followed. I think I, I had a bat with me. Um, yeah, that was pretty much how the altercation went down. We went back, tried to get Habib's car, 
police was already there. Cedar Rapids Police Department was there too. I think they were helping out with, at the time. Um, and then I got taken home. I found a little bit of weed in my backpack. You guys get detained down at the high school, right? Oh uh, yeah, right near the high school. Or, yeah, near the high school, yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we talked about your your current impressions or opinions of, of Chayden. Uh, again, a, a year and a half removed from the incident itself, how do, you, how do you look back on that particular incident now? I mean, with the deepest regret, I wouldn't even sum it up. Um, and not just regret for myself and for the loss of my freedom, but just, I just regret killing Miss Graver. I regret, you know, what it's done for the community, what it's done for my family, for my dad, um, what it's done for their family, obviously, the Miller's family. And when do you think that that, that feeling took hold? Like once you were here in the last few months? It would have been probably about, well, I, when, when you get into the uh, detention center, they keep you isolated in your room for seven days. And it would have been during that period of introspection and self-reflection, which was pretty much all I had to do besides reading, would have been at that point mm -hmm. that I right. began to realize. Yeah. And the reason I ask is because if you read the text messages to John and, and you look at that selfie, forgive me, but that doesn't look like a person that has a whole lot of regret. And, and you say that, you know, you could be trying to act with bravado or a coolness or a coldness, but, you know, th that that's tough to, to look around and say that, like, oh, this person's remorseful. So how would, I mean, do you think that those messages and that picture was indicative of how you felt in the moment? I mean, yeah, in the moment I probably would have been, I guess, high off of, you know, whatever happens, like I guess high off adrenaline and all that and maybe even, like you were saying, possibly feeling, you know, empowered or whatever by the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and then wanting to seem like a like Billy Badass, I guess, making all those remarks. Sure. Okay. Um, we've been in here almost two hours. Um, um, before we do... I wasn't going to close up. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to just be clear, and, you know, typically I have you guys leave the room and talk to my client. I don't want to give anyone the impression, obviously, this is being no. recorded, like I'm telling my client no. what he needs to say. Uh, but he's gone over a lot of things. There's some things that we spoke about specifically that I want to make sure that are expressed to the state. Um, that way, you know, again, everything's out there and you know, can't be accused of leaving anything out. Because again, these were things that we've discussed. Um, So, you kind of described this, Jeremy, but um, just to be explicit, um, when Chayden first hit Miss Graber, and you, you said that that was pretty hard, did you think that was pretty much with all the force that he could muster? 100%, yeah. Okay, and based on that first blow, you had the impression like that was going to kill her. She was going to die based on Chayden, that very first hit, correct? Correct. If, now, and, and you talked about how um, there was a plan and you felt that Chayden was serious, but at the same time, you're kind of hoping he wouldn't go through with it, right? And. So, kind of talk about that. Again, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I know these are things that we've discussed. So, you know, and the things that we've discussed were, you know, kind of that oh shit, oh shit moment that he actually did it. And then you're sort of thinking about, you know, I helped plan this, I helped, I was the lookout. Sort of the gravity of everything is coming down on you. And I'm realizing it's all pointing to me just as much as him and there's, really no way out of it. And so, I mean, I could have, probably should have, definitely should have just walked away at that point, but I said that rational thinking was going through the window and I was realizing, like, 
how implicated I was in what had just happened, and so. And so there's absolutely no doubt in your mind, had Chayden not made that first hit, this would not have happened? No, there was no way I was going to do a, do the first hit, swing, hit, throw the first blow. There was my, and, and your initial inten intention was to help Chayden, not to help participate in what had happened. That's just how it kind of went. Correct. I, could, I, I even said it to him. I said, Jesus, I, I could have never, I could have never done that, that first hit. I could have never done that. And then he turned to me and he said, well, I was going to do it with or without you. And you had mentioned, I think, the first time that you were describing you hitting Miss Graber, and I think you described it, and, and again, we've talked about this before, but just to make it clear to the state, and, and we've talked about, you know, the legal implications really don't change anything, but at that moment, you felt she was going to die, and you even expressed to your dad, you felt like it was kind of a mercy killing that you were putting her out of her misery at that point? Correct. Okay. We have talked about how in the aftermath of all this going on, the Snapchats and the messages that make you look cold, make you look a certain way, and obviously your, your hope was that you wouldn't get caught, right? I mean, you're not trying to purposely get caught, but at the same time you're doing things that are really reckless with information. Mm -hmm. um, and something that I know is actually in, I think, some of the snaps that we've discussed, but you didn't mention here today, you expressed, I think, maybe John or one of your other friends that you were feeling suicidal right afterward, correct? Correct. Can you, again, I, I don't want to be the one to convey all this stuff, so Jeremy, I don't want you to be right. talking right. about these things. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I had picked up my phone that night that I told John. I picked up my phone originally to tell him that I was just like, I was on the brink of just ending it all. I mean, I, there was some serious shit that had just gone down and I wasn't even sure what to do. And so I told John that and he, started to talk me down, and then it kind of just all came out. Do you find John to be a pretty honest and genuine guy? For the most part, yeah. Yeah. Any reason why he would lie about this information? No. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, those were the That's only it. things I think otherwise he's yeah. been pretty you comprehensive and consistent. Yeah, a couple things. Um, so when you got the trial information, obviously you know John and Kaylee came in, Dale Herlin came in. I mean, no secret. Everybody's everybody came in and said these two. Did you ever write to anybody other you told you two gaming buddies, told John you kinda of beat around the bush and, and then eventually told Zach. Other than did you, anybody at school? Do you tell anybody, I caught a body, I killed Mrs. Graber? No. You don't discuss it? Well, there would have been, I mean, um, Elka Haquez, I'm pretty sure is how her name's spelled. I think I made some offhand suggestive comments to her, but nothing as direct as I caught a body with a bat. No. Okay. And we've got those, those comments. Yeah. Was there ever a time when, okay, here's the handle of a baseball bat, was there ever a time when it was held at the meat end and hit with the handle portion? No. No? Okay. When, when you guys get the trial information and you figure out who's talked and said what and stuff like that, um, when you guys are down, down here at Montrose, do you ever have a conversation with Jaden about trying to get back at the people who talked. There's never been any vindictiveness. I mean, I held a little bit of resentment towards John at the beginning, but nothing that I expressed to Jaden. Okay, and Jaden's never 
said I'm gonna get back. He hasn't said I'm gonna get back. I mean, but he definitely has expressed his distaste and disappointment towards, you know, Dale and John. Okay. At some point after Chayden kind of tells his eight-person cockamamie story that's unbelievable, believable, uh, that's a bunch of crap, um, do, at some point at the very end of that, he says, it's all you. This is all Jeremy. Jeremy planned it. I'm just an innocent bystander. I got I was at the wrong place at the wrong moment. Is that accurate, inaccurate? Couldn't be farther from the truth. And how does that make you feel? That he's throwing you under the bus? Disappointed more than anything. I mean, it's just hurt, betrayed, um, the list goes on. Um, the, the, uh, now, to, to, to somewhat summarize, um, it, it seems as if the way you describe it was that this was Chayden's issue with her. It was his motive against her. You were a loyal friend to him, there to help, and then wound up finishing the job. Um, can you think of any reason, like, and, and then just so just now you've completely denied that it was ever your intention to harm Miss Graber. You were there ultimately to finish the job, mercy killing, as, as you told your attorney. Um, can you think of any reason why somebody or some information might come to us that indicates otherwise? Like we talked about how you had her as a teacher last year. Could there possibly be anybody that comes to us and say like, hey, um, don't think that this is all on Shaden. Jeremy had beef with her too. I had already taken two years of language classes. I'm pretty sure that's all that's required for colleges to get, you know, scholarships and all that. I wasn't planning on taking any more classes with her. As far as I was concerned, I she was like out of my life. Mm -hmm. So. So what you're saying is that there is no information or evidence out there that's going to indicate that you yourself had a personal issue with her beyond your friend having a personal issue with her. I might have said like. She's not a good teacher, but mm -hmm. that's pretty much the extent. Of okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Um, I, I'm just about done here. Let's take a quick break. Um, I'm going to use the restroom quick. We'll we'll confer with uh, with the others and come back and finish up. And I got water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. We'll make sure you get one of those. Thanks. Do you want to flip off the switch? Sure. Or do yep. you want to keep it running? Nope. I want to know. We can flip the switch. If it's going to be on or off, basically. And we will flip the switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're bringing yeah. this for him. Yeah, they're bringing. Yeah, yeah. They're bringing. They're he's bringing. trying to get it. Thank you. I'm gonna turn this back on. Did you flip that? Switch? I did. I okay. just flipped it on the way back here. Okay, so we're going. A couple questions. Um, so one of the things that we know that's missing is from Mrs. Graber's bag from the van is when she had meetings with students, she kept a journal, and it was like a multicolored notebook. Mm -hmm. And it had, I met with such and such on such and such date, we discussed this, met with their parents, we discussed this, met with the principal. Come on in. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. I must have thought you were thirsty. So um, that's missing. Uh, it might have been contained in the small purse that we threw into the area around the van, but. I, I, I wasn't looking for that. I don't know if that's something Chayden picked up or not. Okay. Did Chayden ever talk about being aware of such a journal of like, that's where she keeps her? Never came up. Okay. And then when we discovered the body, the only high school kid to drive into the park, or the only person period to drive into the park other than the police or the people looking for Mrs. Graber was McKenna. Hine. Hmm. She had no contact with McKenna. I didn't have any contact with McKenna Hine for that whole week, pretty much. I was spent. I spent that whole from October 30th to like November 3rd was like spent entirely with 
um, John, Kaylee, and Zoe. Okay. Okay. Um, mindful. Wait, sorry, that's a lie. But kind of did drive past me um, when I was sitting outside of the school. She did drive past me. She stopped and she asked me, like, hey, what are you doing? Need a ride? And I said, no, I'm good. I'm just waiting on Chayden, I think I said. And then she kept driving towards. Would that been with the bell, bell tower when you're leaning on the bike? Tower, yeah, that would have been right there. Okay. And then you see Mr. Hawks about the same time? Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, understanding uh, potential consequences of us having this conversation and how it could play into a, a future prosecution of, of yourself or Chayden. Um, do you have any personal concerns about being housed in the same building or, or safety concerns with him or him getting word out to other people like to try to harm you of any kind? Um, well, I don't think he really has those kind of connections. Okay. Um, as far as I'm worried about him harming me, that's not really something I'm worried about. Okay. Um, although I kind of already told everyone there that I'm probably leaving, so I don't know if I blew cover on that one, but. Right. Because you're close to 18. We yeah. had that discussion with you, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I mentioned this in the beginning, but any questions that we didn't ask that we should be asking or people that we should be talking to or, or anything of that nature to help make it make sense? Um, as far as what was said in Julie Kinsella's office when my dad asked for a place to privately discuss mm -hmm. with me, um, I, he basically just asked me if I was involved and I, I told him that I was. And he asked me if it was it was my plan or how, I, how the extent of my involvement and I kind of just told him I kind of got dragged along into it and that Chayden's plan, all his, his stuff, his bat, he brought all the equipment, um, he even gave me the gloves that I mentioned that I wore, those were his gloves that he gave me um, and I kind of just told him that I, yeah, I, I killed Miss Graver as like a mercy killing essentially is what I told him. Um, and so what you're saying is is that what you told your dad in just a few minutes in in Julie's office is consistent with the um, information, although not as thorough of what we talked about today. Correct. Same story. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And to the best of your knowledge, given what we've just talked about for the last two hours, um, if needs be, would you be willing to raise your right hand, swear that this is the God's honest truth under oath, this is the version of what happened, the, the one and only version of truthfully what happened? I would. Okay. Okay. Any questions for us at this point? No questions. Okay. Well, I think I'm done. Um, hmm? Did you want to add that? Um, I can address the one thing. Um, Well, I, I think he got that clear, but, and again, from Jeremy, of the things that were involved, the only thing you brought was yourself. Everything else, the gloves, the bat, the back of water, the, the pocket knife, the screwdriver, the hammer, all of the, the wheelbarrow, all of that stuff came from Chayton. There was nothing you brought from the house. There was nothing that you bought for the purpose of carrying this out. Correct. Okay. Except for actually, well, I did mention it, should be on the record, but I put a, a shovel from home into the wheelbarrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, with it, yeah. yeah. And, and I'll be honest with it, you seem like an articulate, thoughtful kid. Like, at any point, did you, I mean, granted, maybe you didn't think until he swung that bat that he was for real, but at any point did you think, like, fuck this, dude. Like, don't do this. <sighs> um, I'm going to be honest, I was kind of just going along with him mm -hmm. at the time. I wasn't, I mean, it could have all been avoided if he had just stayed right there on that access trail and never stepped out of there, but yeah, it obviously didn't happen. And I, yeah. did, did you ever think about talking him down? Like, dude, it's a, the thought crossed my mind, but I, I don't know, I, once again, 
that whole image of not wanting to be a pussy right. was kind of influential for me at the time. I see. Okay. All right, well, that's all I have. I think so. the important thing for me, Jeremy, that I want to add is Chayden brought all of this stuff to the park initially. Did you know he was bringing that with? I knew. He, I was pretty sure he was going to bring a bat. Anything else? The rest was just... What you went along with? Yeah. Okay. You're you're aware because we've received things through discovery. And there was a question about it. I don't know that that was kind of flushed out, but it, one of the items of evidence that the state located, I think, on Chayden's computer was sort of like a, a makeshift plan that it seemed like he was trying to be coy about what it was about, but was really very on point with what had happened. You weren't involved in any of that. No. Okay. All right. I think we're all finished up. We'll hit the switch on the way out, and um, if you, when you guys are finished with him, then we can kind of coordinate wherever okay. he needs to go. So. Thanks. They've Thank got you. a pizza coming. For him. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. It's circumstances. Good luck. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Good luck, Jeremy. Both Miller and Goodale initially pleaded not guilty to the crime with Miller even telling detectives that he was forced by her real killers to help them hide her body and drive her van. In the end, this was nonsense. It wasn't until roughly a year after the murder that investigators released the likely motive. Willard Shaden Miller was so upset about Noema Graber giving him a bad grade in her class that he hatched a plot to kill her. That is all. It affected his grade point average, and he felt he had to take matters into his own hands. Jeremy Goodale just went along for the ride. In the spring of 2023, both Willard Miller and Jeremy Goodale pleaded guilty to first-degree murder, and both of them being 17 at the time of sentencing worked in their favor. Willard Miller is appealing his life sentence, and I can only imagine Jeremy Goodale will do the same. Thank you so much for watching. We have a ton of cases in the works, many of which you have never seen, so make sure you're subscribed. We will see you in the next one.